Hello, it's Ed. Welcome to the studio. And thanks for joining me again. Um, one of my big bugbears today, which is rain. I cannot stand it. We're in the middle of that season where it just seems to rain constantly. And I just wonder why I can never get any good shots in the winter. And it's because of the rain. Within a minute of being outdoors, my glasses are covered in streaks and I'm soggy, my camera's soggy, the lens is covered in water. It's just not good. So I was looking around for solutions. I've tried going out with an umbrella and I just can't hold that at the same time as the camera. It's just too clunky. Uh, so I thought, oh, maybe I could invent something. And actually, I went into a cafe and I came up with this amazing idea for a camera umbrella. And then I looked online and, of course, somebody's beating me to it. And there is actually something out there already whether well, there are a variety of uh, options you can get little mini umbrellas that you attach to the hot shoe of your camera and that keeps the camera dry but it's me that i'm more concerned about i want my camera to be kept dry but uh, also i looked at it and it's just really not me i can't see myself walking around with my little mini umbrella over my camera uh, even if it works um and there are sort of big golf umbrellas that you can stick in the ground uh for photography but i not going to be staying in one particular point and there's not actually going to be anywhere that I could stick through concrete or tarmac anyway. And then there's the thing which is closest to what I thought I'd come up with myself, um, which is a little umbrella which sticks into a clamp and the clamp attaches to the camera. So you're sort of holding an umbrella and the camera like this. And that seems to be like the best solution. And if I could uh, afford it and had the time to wait for it to arrive, I might purchase one of those items but you know what it's like I like to do things myself and I like to come up with a solution that works just for me so I've got time on my hands I've got an old umbrella which is falling apart and I can experiment on I have lots of gaffer tape I have lots of clamps of various types so I will try and come up with something uh, original and different from what there's already out there that will do the job right so let's crack on <music> OK, so it's the same unwritten rules as always in that I can't use anything that isn't here already. I can damage the umbrella, but I can't damage any of the things in the unit. I can't cannibalise something that has value to just make it work for this one experiment. I've taken the tripod that you normally see me doing the video videos on and I've turned it upside down and I've shoved that in and I've hammered it in. I think I've come up with something pretty good and I've not seen anything exactly like this anywhere online. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, it probably does, somebody must have come up with this idea, but I've certainly not seen it. So anyway, I guess the thing is to see how it performs in the field. So now I just have to go outside and hope it's raining. Chances are it will be. So only light drizzling Stockport today, um, but we can demonstrate how this works and I'm sure it will get heavier soon. It's a bit too windy as well, so that again, not exactly perfect for the brella. And indeed, a few seconds later, it proved to be the complete end to the brella as it snapped in two. So it's back to the studio to try and create something a little bit more robust, if not quite as attractive, before continuing with the experiment. So here we are, ready to do the first test on this gorgeous rainy day. Uh, forgive the sound of the... Uh, industry going on around us, but uh, I just wanted to find somewhere quick just to show you how I was setting up. I've got the Lumix camera on here uh, because I can use the touch screen as a shutter release as well. And it's upside down, so if I switch it on like this, we're now ready to go. So I am totally dry, the camera is totally dry, but I do look a little bit unusual. Uh, I don't think it's exactly uh, a common look, but I think it'll do the business, and I certainly feel a lot more comfortable than I would if I was just standing in the rain. Don't even need my hood up. So, test shot. Yeah, it's all working really well. So let's get into Stockport, take some pictures in the rain while we stay dry. Great. Oh, and just to let you know as well, I can swap this for the Canon 5D because I've attached this cable release here. So that can act as a shutter release if I had the Canon which doesn't have the touch screen on. Right, off we go. So 
So here I am at the junction of two streets where I quite often would wait for a picture. And uh, it's a lot nicer waiting under this umbrella. And uh, yeah, I'm composing quite well on the screen. Got my zoom here, it's me passing. There we go, nice little shot. And I can get a nice reflection in this window here. Get a shot of myself with my brolly. I think that's quite good actually. Bit of colour in it, bit of light. Yeah, this is, this is amazing. Why did I not think of this years ago? I'm stood here in a place where I'd normally feel really uncomfortable. I would be gone, I'd be indoors having a coffee in McDonald's or something by now normally, but I'm just happy waiting here. Um, yeah, just waiting for things to happen rather than having to keep moving, keep, keep dry. Uh, it's really nice. Having said that, I wouldn't mind a coffee. We want to get umbrellas and reflections really, don't we? Reflections of umbrellas, it's a bit cliched, but we're just doing a test. This is not going to be a search for portfolio shots. Maybe go for slightly further away. Does that work? Okay, so I think that was a pretty successful test with the Lumix. But for the sake of exhaustivity, whatever the word is, I'm very wet and cold. Um, I'm going to try it with the Canon 5D as well. We're going to fire it? Lovely. So let's see if we can get some pictures. This is going to be lower down. Uh, but anyway, we work with what we have. Okay, so there we go. I think that was a pretty successful experiment. In fact, a lot more successful than I thought it was going to be. I really thought I was going to be sat here saying, well, it was worth a go, wasn't it? A bit of a disaster, but that's why we try these things out. But actually, it worked pretty well. I don't think I came back with an amazing set of photographs, but I came back with a better set than if I'd gone out without that contraption. And I certainly came back a lot drier and a lot less miserable than if I hadn't had it. I think I've not tried any of the commercially available alternatives. I'd be really interested to know what you think of them if you tried them. But I've not seen one with this sort of quick release system that I ended up with using the tripod, which just seemed really stable, really secure, and didn't make me worry about my camera while I was out there. Obviously, it has got the major drawback that the camera's upside down, and if you don't have a tiltable screen like the Lumix had, it's hard to see what you're doing, if not impossible. And if you can't use that as a shutter release as well, then you're going to have to attach a cable release like I did with the 5D camera to enable you to focus and take a shot. So it works better with some cameras than others. Also, there's the weight implication. The small Lumix camera, it was brilliant. It felt perfectly balanced and really, really comfortable. Not much more weight than if I was just having a normal umbrella. But with the Canon, it really did feel cumbersome and heavy and it was starting to make my arm tired. So all things to bear in mind. But this is something I cobbled together in 20 minutes looking around the studio trying to put something together out of what I already had. If I was able to get a quick release little tripod column that was for the job, a little bit shorter, a little bit lighter, that would be brilliant. If I set my camera up to have all the settings mirrored so I could see things better, that would be fantastic as well. If it had if it was a, a professional device which had a Bluetooth trigger or whatever and you could attach it to it, that would be amazing. But it is what it is and I think it did its job really well. Um, I was really pleased with it. And it's not damaged anything. It's, it's still, everything's doing its job. I could put it back together again if I wanted to. So that's it. I'd be interested to know what your solutions are to going out in the rain and taking pictures because it has been the bane of my life and there is so much of this rain in Stockport and Manchester I think the only way to stop it is to say you're going to do something in the rain and, and that actually managed to make the rain go away for a week so I'll, I'll remember that tip for next time but I'll leave it there for now if there's anything else you'd like to know please ask the questions in the comments if you've anything you'd like me to do in future episodes let me know there as well hopefully I'll be back next week with another DIY photography adventure for us to share until then take care of yourselves have a really good week that's it bye for now don't forget, once again, like, subscribe, please. Thanks again. Bye.